The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel is a fantastic JRPG brought to us by Falcom and localized by Exceed Games. While yes, there are previous entries in the series, Trails in the Sky, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd chapter, Trails in Zero and Azure, none of them are necessarily required to play to enjoy this game. The Trails in the Sky trilogy isn't referenced a lot because it's a past event. Meanwhile, Trails to Zero and Azure are connected to the Trails of Cold Steel in that both games are happening at the same time as this one. Trails of Cold Steel takes place in the fictional country of the highly militarized Yerbonian Empire, in the city of Trista, home of Sora's Military Academy, to be precise. Sora's Military Academy is actually a segregated academy in that Class 1 and 2 are reserved for nobles and nobility only, and Class 3, 4, and 5 are only for the commoners. Of course, nothing stops these two social classes from being friends, going to the same bathrooms, and things like that. However, the fact that they are separated by class and dorms does create a little bit of social tension among students that think they are better because they are of noble birth. This is where your newly formed class comes in, Class 7, whereas Class 6, don't ask. A class of nine students who hold both nobility and commoners, as well as its own dormitory. So, what makes these students so special that that requires them to have their own class? Well, during the entry test, they all proved to be very compatible with the new Arxis technology and Emma and Elliot to staffs. That's it. Although because of their compatibility with the new technology, their curriculum is very different than the rest of their peers. That said, the game story is split up into two sections each chapter. One section always takes place in the academy, and the other takes place in wherever your field study is placed. During the school sections, there are a couple of things that have to be done. On your free days, you have to go around helping student the student council, which means you go around helping students and people in town. So in a way, they aren't really free for rain. For, of course, most of these things end up being totally optional. The only real request needed to be done is usually asked by the principal himself. Those tasks aside, you also have bonding points to spend which, well, bond with some of your classmates in a one-on-one -on -one session. These sessions actually vary quite differently from one another every time you bond with them. Some small characters' development aside, each at one grants you link points, and the closer they get, the more they help each other out in battle. On the flip side, in regards to the field studies, they are sort of the same thing as the tasks in your free days. Although, now you're not in the city of Trista, you're out in the town or city somewhere in Erbonia. These sections are where the story picks up, as you can only learn so much about the world you live in at school. The battle system in this game takes aspects from previous Trails games and makes them faster and more involved. In battle, you have three meters per character to look, look out for, HP, EP, and CP. Okay. Your HP meter is for your health, so if it reaches zero, your character is KO'd. EP are your effort points for using arts, think magic, and such. The CP meter are craft points. These are sort of like arts, but are character-specific and are unique to said character, and they're done with no wait time. You gain CP by either hitting an enemy or by being hit yourself. Having 100 CP allows you to use an S-Craft skill. These are very powerful attacks that consume 100 CP, and if you have 200 CP, that attack is much more potent. On your enemy side, outside of being weak with two elemental attacks, some are weak against certain kind of physical strikes. That's something to seriously consider due to the fact that when you hit them with something that they're weak against, you can get a partner to do additional damage to them. One last major part of the battles to watch out for, however, is the turn order. You see, it doesn't just go from top to bottom and call it a day. Throughout the battle, the game may provide several types of bonuses ranging from guaranteed critical hit landings to allow you to use an art immediately with the low cost of 0 EP and gaining extra CP. Sadly, no game is without its fault. In this game's case, the game's pacing is incredibly faulty due to the aforementioned school life to study transitions. The school life parts of the game aren't necessarily bad. Seeing how some of your classmates evolve and get along with each other is great as you see things change on a day-to-day -day basis. The problem is that after a while, it feels like it's slowing down the game and just dragging it on. In a way, you just want to check up on everyone and then immediately move on because the field studies become the more involved and serious and interesting. Which then brings it all back to the fact that once the field study is over, back to school you go for a couple of hours while the tensions throughout the nation only continue to escalate. In the end, it can't really be helped as you're just a bunch of students. Saving the world isn't your job, getting an education is. All in all, the game is great. The term saving the best for last definitely applies here as XC brought over one of the best JRPGs at the very last minute. That said, other than the pacing issues, the game runs sluggishly, and the character animations aren't great, but this can be overlooked as everything else holds the game up quite well, and I couldn't get enough of it. And that does it for our Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel video review. If you want to read a full and detailed more written review by my editor, Minkoto, check out the um, description bar down below, and also leave a comment letting us know what you guys thought of the review. And as always, everyone, this is Gamalad, signing off.